I'm convinced that I have the best job in the world. After all, I get to learn from the talented sewing, quilting, and fiber art enthusiasts, and then I get to share that information with you. Preparing for this two-part series on machine needle felting, I learned how to combine felting, shading, and embroidery techniques to create fiber art. My instructor is your instructor. Welcome back, Isabella Hoffman. Isabella, I've felted before, but you taught me felting finesse. Thank you so much for the compliment. I, I'm glad and I'm happy to hear that you enjoy it. I do. Um, the first project for this program features the fine points of shading. My art piece, the berries and the hair, looks like it might be difficult to master. Freezer paper patterns take all the guesswork out of where to shade and highlight the felted pieces. It's an enjoyable process. Machine needle felting, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Today we're going to review some of the basic techniques of working with felting, the types of fabrics, and then proceed in adding Isabella's great ideas on shading. It's like color by number. You it's can't go, by, no, you can't go wrong. Exactly. No, it's now, very easy. The fabrics, just as a quick review, are varied. The, you have um, the hand dyed fabrics, which I really, really love to work with because you can get so many color variations out of it. In wool. And, mm -hmm. and really in wool, it wool, these are woven fabrics. And then here, uh, sometimes I like using elements like these where you can definitely tell that they're from a suit or you have that, um, uh, what is it, okay, herring, herring herringbone bone. look, mm -hmm. which is great like, for, for baskets and so on. And then in this area, I like using solid colors, which is wool felt, which felts even faster yet. Um, the, uh, you will notice that this is a little bit thinner, but uh, you get a, a faster reaction than you actually do with these. And so all of these different things give you different variations of felting techniques. Now the rabbit that we're going to go over, you can use your favorite applique pattern or in the book that accompanies today's program, Isabella has the designs already outlined and this shows the rabbit in a very silhouetted form. No simple form, right. And then you copy this onto freezer paper, trace it onto freezer paper either by photocopy and then this has simply been the freezer paper side just pressed right onto the felt. To the wool felt, right. And uh, then you go ahead and you cut it out and then you peel the paper off. Now what's really important on this is that when you peel it off, mm -hmm. let me just take this, when you're peeling it off, can I just show you a quick sure. You peel it off and you lay it down just like this because we are working on the opposite side. The reason we do that is because as we adding then the body parts to it, I have created um, shading uh, uh, guides mm -hmm. and templates that show you, for instance, in here you can see that we have these sections of the bodies. But then the next step I did in order to make it easier yet, I actually created patterns for you that all you have to do is trace, cut these out right on the line and then uh, take these freezer paper pieces and place them onto um, the rabbit and you can tell where the body parts go. And we will be showing you that shading technique. So of the shading elements, you don't cut those out of fabric. That's just kind of a template. So we'll review working with a felting machine or hand felting technique and then show you the dimensional and the shading element to come. Just as a quick review, we're going to be working with an embellishing or felting machine that doesn't have a needle or a bobbin and it has more than one needle. It has a 12 barb needles that with a protective area that mesh fabrics together. And Isabella is going to show you how easily that works. Or if you want to baste or do this by hand, you can use a hand felter and the calibrated brush that is longer bristles than the needles, and then you can meld the wool fabrics easily together. This takes a little bit longer, but it works on the same premise. 
Isabella, you worked with the machines because you have a very densely felted area. Felted in a large area, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm like that heavy poking with five <laughs> needles. I think I love this machine because sure. if you want to be the expert of laziness, that's it right here. <laughs> so um, let me show you how I uh, felt, and I think that would be the important part. Um, when uh, we lay these pieces down, you do want to push on the machine quite heavy. Because the heavier you go, the easier your fabric will float underneath it. And I go along the edges quite well. You can first tack it a little bit. Just like in quilting, you want to start from the center out, maybe. And then come along here. But then if I'm really going to do some serious felting, I'm going to, in small circles, with the speed, and I'm going to continue up into here, and you can immediately see that you have a reaction on the other side, and you periodically want to, you can see how nicely dense this is. So here, um, we finished uh, the rabbit, the machine felting, mm -hmm. and you can see the difference with the tail. We actually had two tail pieces in order to get more fluff for the cotton tail and <laughs> to get more a better color. Sure. You use two layers you instead of layers. one. And you're also meshing uh, two different colors. You're not only meshing the beige from this, but you're also meshing this, and that changes the hue of the color, and therefore you want to sometimes add two layers to get more of the same color that you actually want. So we're working with the reverse side as the correct side. You punch from one side and you have the pressed or the merged the fabrics, fibers from the other. And as we're progressing along in this series, we're doing more detail. Isabella has designed some guidelines for shading, and we mentioned that earlier. And you cut these sections out of freezer paper, but not a fabric. Not out of freezer paper, because that really is what makes the whole process simple. And then it's cut out of freezer paper, and then the freezer paper is pressed onto the fabric, and it, it can be used several times. Um, and I saved them, and... Um, Isabel, I may not be getting these just That's correct, okay. but you can, can kind, of, kind of geek them in there for okay. you. Okay, <laughs> position them. That's right. And I'll put a little. Yeah. So you're going to just kind of follow the dots and. And in the book, it shows you where to sure. place them. I have an embroidery guide and a shading guide that shows you how to place these pieces. And you can see how easy they fit together because you can just follow the shape of the rabbit. And the purpose of this is this is a progression step, that you can see how to do the outline without having to free motion it or That's guess. That's right. If you are afraid or you're uh -huh. not steady with your hand, you can just simply uh, sure. press it down and start over. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this piece right here, and I'm going to show you how I shade these pieces. So here we have um, the freezer paper. I take the lightest color brown because that will erase very easy with the blender if I make a mistake. So on the back tail, um, back leg right here, I'm just going to trace. And the same thing like in here. Give them a the little bit of thigh, maybe come up a little bit higher here. I'm going to follow the leg right here. This is, and you can see there's a little bit of space in here because that gives me the second part of the leg. In here, this is what they call the gusset. That is sort of the three-dimensional part of the rabbit. And it separates the ear as well as the head. And then you can outline this inner part, which is the inner part of the ear. There we go. Now you can peel this back, and you can see very well. Mm -hmm. That might be a little bit too light for you. If you like what you have done, you can always take a darker color. Uh, the next step I want to do, because people are very, very afraid to draw by hand, you can take the freezer paper piece if you feel comfortable and just plain simply lay it down. I have cut out the eye from the face and so I can just trace it. And that way I take the guesswork out of sure. where my eye is going to be. I don't have to worry about it. it's going to be ending up by the ear or somewhere else. <laughs> and um, I'm going to just lift this and create a little mouth. Okay, here I go. And just remove it. Oh, it, it all at once comes alive. Ta -da. And let me pull this away from here. And you can already really see well where all the pieces are going to be. And this is a, another stage of your design where you can see that she's highlighted, darkened some of the areas, and, and in the leg section, you've done a second shading. You, you take actually the brown marker, and, mm -hmm. um, and if I can show this real quickly here. Sure. Let's, 
because we like this and it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to just kind of go over it because I'm happy with it. And just with the blender, I want to show you how easy it is to drag these colors actually out. If you place the white tip of the blender right on to the brown, you can literally pull the shades out. Mm -hmm. And you can see the difference already, how, yes. how it has started and creates a shadow effect. And that's how you go about with all the other pieces. Working with sewing and fabric and felting machines and quilting is a very creative process. And I'm always pleased to learn new ways of, of working with this. And Isabella has taught us that. And here you see another variation of this same type of design, different fabric combinations, additional sh shading, and this time cruel embroidery to highlight it. So as you can see, machine felting is creative and rewarding. While shopping at the thrift store, my friend Karen and I stumbled upon an old nuded green plaid coat. The fabric reminded me of a brown basket and I knew it would soon be part of a felted project. And Karen helped me much, helped me decide which flowers and colors would best fit into the basket. This design was a collaborative effort. Well, Isabella, sewing and quilting and working with felting is collaborative, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you're going to be melding fibers and fabrics as well as getting advice from friends. And here's a sample of that old plaid coat, yeah. plaid coat that has been washed. Yeah, you, you want to wash your coats that you find either at Goodwill or wherever in your closet sure. so that when you're cutting it, it won't shr uh, shrink or it won't also fray. Then you press on the pattern that has been roughly cut out and then cut it to shape. Now you saw Isabella do the felting earlier and you, since you're felting from the applique side, you have to periodically check. The, to make the, sure that you density. have enough fiber, one to bond it and also mm -hmm. to show. So you can see that she would have to go through this area. A little bit more uh, in order bit. to establish a little bit more. But you might guess we have a sample that's perfect. We already had, and so what I did here, um, in here I'm showing that the piece is already finished felted. And what I would like to show you in this particular step is how I am um, actually going to go ahead and um, create the shading areas in that you need first before you continue with anything else. So let me show you at least a few steps in here how I'm doing this. I would like to take um, the dark mark. Uh, it's a chocolate brown marker that I'm using, and I want to find the center. And you can count either your points or you can eye it, and you just go straight down. And these scallops kind of match mm -hmm. a little bit off-center here. And you also want to come around on a bold area. And now you can just continue. As you're coming towards the end, you might... Um, turn these a little bit fan so that you mm -hmm. fan it out so you can see the curve of the basket. I'm not quite perfect. Oh, I think it looks it yeah. looks like those old-fashioned baskets, which this is. And then is. what I would like to show, I'm going to stretch this one out here a little bit. Um, the other thing that I added then in, in this basket, I added a little bit of a diamond shaped. And you just create a little diamond shape and color these in. And as you're doing that, it creates another little uh, focal point for the eye. Here we go and you just keep continuing throughout this. If you wanted then to add um, the weaving part mm -hmm. of the basket, you just kind of add the different lines sure. alternately, you know, up like that. And the wool is, it, it's a subtle, it's not sharp lines, things don't have to be exact. They don't have so to be exact. For us. The nice part about these markers too, if you have a uh, mistake, you can take actually your blender and you can hold it, I'm gonna just hold it on here, and it pretty much eats it and sharpens these areas where you feel like you made a mistake. And you can start over. And you mentioned that your friend helped you decide which fabrics should go together and adding what flowers. And if we take a close-up look at your frame picture, you'll see the pansies. And the pansies are in this area, one of your favorite flowers. And that's an excellent little flower to add with small little heart-shaped pieces that you can simply fell. And I can show you how I put these together. They're rather, rather simple to do. I also have a little sample right here to just kind of show you the start. Mm -hmm. And right here, I start out with the yellow center. I add my light lavenders and then my darker shades. And so let me just show you how I do this with the machine felting. Uh, it might be easier for you 
to just felt um, the center down first. And you don't need a lot of felting because it's very quick. Here we go. Now we're adding, we added the basket we, applique from the underside. From the underside. And the flowers and from the top And we're going to side. do the flower from mm -hmm. the top so that we get more d dimension. So our punch side is now going to be on the opposite side from the basket. So let me uh, add um, the little next petals to it. And you just add them like a little puzzle piece. And you can see it's very, very fast. Uh, these machines really bond well. And then we just add these here. And because wool is, the fibers of wool, the way they're designed, they just meld together. They, and they just melt together. It, um, the fibers being, being punched through to the other side, and this is actually what bonds the material. It's and just amazing how fast done. that it's is. How fast, isn't it amazing? And you like to work with your grandchildren Absolutely. On you give them all your schnipples, save every little bit of the tea towels, put them uh -huh. in your plastic bags, and let them go to town. And, and you'll be surprised. Yes. <laughs> now, the leaves can be varied and add interest. Yes. In here with the leaves, I did different types of leaves. Uh, so there's something more like a, a fern, and then you have these fan kind of uh, leaves and these. And you want to do different colors. That's why you want to save all your schnipples so that you have as many colors to choose from. And what I did here on this particular basket, I'm going to take this piece off. I already peeled off the paper, and I just laid it onto here. So you assemble your bouquet the way you would want to. This is sort of a free flow. And you don't need to do everything in these flowers. You might want to just do the center, and you can see that these little edges come off, gives you another mm -hmm. dimension. And here we can add this little guy into here. I'm going to peel that paper off. And you're going to see really well here that the color changes, and that is another really cool um, byproduct. By of, oh, yeah, amazing. You can see right here. And again, I don't do all of it. Some of them I do all, some of them come from the back. And you can mm -hmm. already see now, by adding a little bit of an embroidery to it, you're adding another dimension to it, like I did right in this piece, in these pieces right here. Some hand embroidery. And then you can yep. add flowers of felting, or as Isabella did in her work of art, you'll see that there are some antique glass beads. And the glass beads have been added in this area. We also have uh, silk ribbon embroidery by hand, but you could interchange ideas. Interchanges. If you don't know how to do silk ribbon embroidery, then you just cut out some petals and make them sure. look like daisies. And I do have some of these pieces here. For instance, this is the star flower. Uh, here we have something like the. Um, I I forgot what he's called. I think a cone flower. Cone flowers. Echinacea, and you right. can see how, how I put the petals together. Of course, the freezer paper is still on it. Um, this would be the, if I want to, I can interchange these colors. I can use white, I can use blue, um, and do a little bit of French knot in the center. It's a very quick, it's just very, very quick. But place them wherever you feel like you want to and make your own bouquet. And here's another bouquet that's in the process. Mm -hmm. You can see that we have, this happens to have some uh, French knots in the center of, instead of the antique buttons, you can see the options that you may have. And then uh, Isabella has done some shading with her pen. So it's, it's a very fun process. And if you need to reposition. If it, you just tack it yes. lightly, so mm -hmm. you don't punch really heavy, just punch it once, you can lift it up without any damage and replace it. And uh, that is, uh, a very comforting feeling. Sure. Let's take a look at uh, some tulip designs. And here's a very basic tulip design and was done simply. Very simple. I actually had an 11 year old girl try this out uh. and it was amazing uh, what she came up with. Of course, she needed a little bit of help sure. with the shading, but it was a confident booster for that girl. And then phase two shows a little bit more detail. Yes. Uh, in phase two, you can see how I added more of the embellishment. And in phase three, actually, I add an extra uh, uh, edging to it that I just pl simply punched on it. So that last image has a scallop border that has just been punched. Isabella, a wonderful ex experience to work with you and to Thank learn you. machine felting. Thank you for being Thank my guest. Thank you very much.
Today's Nancy's Corner guests think of themselves as serial crafters. They've never been on the most wanted list, but instead create sought-after scarves and accessories that are eco-conscious. I'd like you to meet Claudia Winter and Laura Fote, who are friends and now have the additional title of entrepreneurs. Claudia and Laura, welcome to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's an interesting combination, friendship, crafts, sewing, and a business. We're trying to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> now, Claudia, the idea of the dot and the scarves was your Christmas gift idea. Yeah. I like to hand make my Christmas gifts. It's that whole crafty thing. Mm -hmm. Why buy when you can make something cute? Yes. Um, and I've been doing art fairs for a number of years, and I got the idea just from a collection of different things that I'd seen. So I gave one to Laura for Christmas. And I in turn wore it around town and everybody loved them and I said that would be a really fun gift for some of my friends so I asked her to make a few more and then they get a lot of comments so we, I thought let's try this as a business. I think there's a demand. And your scarves and accessories as we'll see have all been made with recycled wool. Yes, mm -hmm. it's all sweaters. And lots of dots. Yeah, don't ask me why. It's just a shape that we're drawn to. <laughs> and, and it's a design that they've worked in, that they're, they're copywritten material, so it's not that people are going to go and copy these, because it would be hard to do, but friends working together with a love of sewing and crafting. And you start with the sweaters before they're washed. Yes, we purchase all our sweaters from Salvation Army and Goodwill, and we'll take donations. And a piece of sweater looks like this before we start, and then we felt it, and we cut them up and piece them into something beautiful and fun. And I had to laugh, but you told me that your home smells like wet wool. Wet wool, <laughs> yeah. If you've ever washed your dog, you'll recognize the smell. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as we look at, I'm just going to look at the kind of the tail of your sweater, any co fabric combination, a lot of circles, and you incorporate the, the help of your children. Oh, yeah. Um, our children like to help cut the dots uh -huh. and cut up the sweaters and you know they fancy themselves artists and I think Laura's daughter would like to go into business with us someday. Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> and they're <laughs> very good at telling which sweaters are wool and which aren't now because they know how to check the tags very well. well very good. At least you have a secession plan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now not all fabrics are suitable for drapeable sweaters. That's right. Sometimes we don't know what they're going to turn out like. Mm -hmm. um, you think you've got a fine sweater and then once you felted it in the wash it turns out too thick, not something that you'd like to yes. put on your neck. So we try and, since we try and use all the parts, we use the thick wool to make um, things like hot pads or a, a purse or a bag. And with the purses as well as the scarves, we try and use all the details that come on the sweater. Now this was a cardigan. Yep, it's still got the pockets on the back. Oh, cu oh cute. You used, <laughs> now let's just show the, the back of it. So you can use the outside pockets. You stitch the opening closed. Yeah, it's still the original opening, but we've got to make it functional. And something that was, you, you recycle almost everything, but you have some magnetic snaps mm -hmm. in here as well as some additional strapping. Yeah, we tried to, to stick with recycled, but the purse was just much more usable with uh -huh. the webbing on it. So. Very clever. Now, uh, Laura, you have some other unique configurations. Sometimes you have recycled garments that have snaps on it, and isn't that Yeah, it's function? all in the details. Whatever sweaters we find, is one of our items are all one of a kind, so we never know if we're going to find it again. Uh -huh. So we find that people like those details, and we've ventured into flowers a little bit as well because we've, we found that people like those. But like this sweater, I don't know if we'd ever find this again, but it was so much fun, and those details, I think, are what draw people to them. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. very, very clever. And you've recently incorporated serging. Yeah. I, I like to buy new toys, so I've got three sewing machines now, but I'm, I'm liking the serger because it goes a lot faster. And then you can serge your sections together mm -hmm. if, you, if you're piecemealing any of the sections. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Where, which one? We didn't bring the serge one. Well, that's okay. I think everyone can figure <laughs> out where, where the serging goes. Yeah, that, that will work out fine. So what a, what a clever way of organizing it. Now, as entrepreneurs, your friends, still friends? Yeah. Still good friends. Well, that's good. You always have that line on your contract. We will mm -hmm. always remain friends. Yeah, <laughs> that comes first. So those of you who are interested in starting your own business, take a leap of faith from Claudia and Laura because you have merged your families, incorporating them. You're not traveling far. You're working that out well and using something that you love to do. 
Yeah, it, um, we're making a good business out of something that we enjoy, and we have a lot of fun making them. Yeah, we totally enjoy the cre creative process and making some, something that people enjoy and can give as a special gift for someone. And it's just, it's, it's been a very interesting experience. Well, thank you for sharing your story and your delightful works of art. We look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on Sewing with Nancy and for this two-part series on machine needle felting with Isabella Hoffman. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Isabella Hoffman has written a fully illustrated book entitled Machine Needle Felting that serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $24.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2409. Order item number IHMNF, Machine Needle Felting, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.